Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to D News Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode three of four in our series on time travel. Now, you don't have to time travel to go back and watch the first two episodes of this series. I highly recommend it. We've covered some pretty heady stuff so far about how we got obsessed with time travel, what time even is, some theories of time travel, and how it could be possible using the physics that we understand now. Today we're going to talk about the consequences of time travel, and we're going to continue to talk about whether or not there have been actual people who have time traveled. It's going to be awesome. Please subscribe so you get all the episodes so far. Let's do this, though. Let's say we overcame all the things that limit us, right? And we could theoretically travel through time. Let's just say, you know, Rick and Morty are out there and they've figured it out. So what paradoxes would arise if we were to actually do that? Paradox is a cool word. It's got an X in it. Everybody loves Xs when they're trying to think of cool words. But what is a paradox? It basically means there is a contradiction in logic. One that you can think of right off the bat is the time-space relevancy in time travel. This is a thing that I've come up with over the years. If Marty McFly was driving through the Twin Pines Mall parking lot and he went back in time, say, an hour, the Twin Pines parking lot would not be there anymore because the Earth would have moved. In that hour, the Earth has traveled around the sun. The solar system has moved through the galaxy. The galaxy has moved through the universe. That parking lot is not there an hour ago. It's in a completely different three-dimensional location. That is a problem that I have with time travel in general. It's a contradiction in logic. But a lot more paradoxes come around in the case of real time travel thoughts, right? And as we understand the universe and cause, it becomes a little more complicated to think of cause and effect without coming into paradoxes. So traveling back in time to before you were born doesn't make sense because you weren't there. Okay, let me explain it this way. The granddaddy of all time travel paradoxes, pun absolutely completely intended, the grandfather paradox. You've definitely heard of this if you've ever talked about time travel while at a bar with your friends. Just me, cool. So the little explanation of this is essentially you go back in time and somehow want to kill your grandpapa, okay? I don't know why you would want to do that. He's a nice guy. Maybe he's not a nice guy. I don't know. Regardless. So you go back and you kill him before he was able to get with your grandma and create your dad. If he didn't have a chance to conceive you, how would you have been able to have been born, get into the DeLorean, and go back to kill your grandfather, right? That is a paradox. It's a logical flaw. And the thing about those paradoxes is you can create this loop of, okay, well, you go back and kill your grandfather, but then that's a paradox, so it never should have happened, so somehow it's repaired, but then your grandfather is able to conceive you, and then you go back and kill your grandfather. But in doing so, now you have ruined the timeline, so you have another timeline, and you, know, you end up with this loop, and it's bad. It's bad. Remember those closed time-like curves we were talking about earlier, the CTCs? If you don't remember that, Go back and watch yesterday's episode. Basically, a really powerful gravitational field that bends time back onto itself. You can have those and solve the grandfather paradox. Super cool, kind of. Not at a macro level, on a quantum level. I know, it's kind of a cop-out. In 2014, a physicist from the University of Queensland, Tim Ralph, and his team experimented with CTCs in relation to the grandfather paradox. The idea being, you could look at interactions of pairs of polarized photons in a quantum system. So they think that this is the same as a single photon transversing a CTC. So basically, if a person, or in this case a quantum particle, entered a CTC to kill their pop-pop, that person would be born with a one-half probability to kill their grandfather. Pop-pop would then have a one-half probability of escaping death at the hands of their stupid grandchild who was a jerk and tried to kill him. Now, if you think about it, because there's a one-half probability, you haven't technically created a paradox because there's a chance that it doesn't happen. Now, I know this is complicated and it's kind of insane, but we can get into a conversation in the comments about why that that works. It's really about mathematics. But let's say you went back and you did kill your pop-pop. What happens then, right? You can't create this time loop, so something has to happen. Well, in some fiction, they call this a skewed timeline or a new timeline or something like that, a la Back to the Future, and then you go back into the future again. You didn't have a grandfather, but somehow you are still there, and the future is different. Now, your pop-pop might not have been a super consequential person in history. Maybe they were. 
let's say your pop pop was Hitler. You go back, you kill Hitler, that's gonna change the world in some ways, say a lot of people. And you travel back into the future and the things are very different. But there are theories here that say you didn't time travel at all. You went to a different timeline where Hitler was killed and then you went back into the future along that new timeline the whole time. Essentially, you went into a parallel timeline when you left yours. You didn't go back on your timeline. This is complicated, but think of it this way. A highway with two lanes running parallel. What you're thinking is you're gonna go backward along your same lane, but in reality, you switched lanes and then went backward. You never were in your lane again. You didn't time travel at all. You just went somewhere else. And there could be infinite universes with infinite timelines, which is how this could work out. You just hop to the right timeline where the thing that you did works. I know this is tough. Now imagine the physicists who sat down and had to think about this all day. Time paradoxes are inevitable when talking about the time travel discussion. Think of the butterfly effect. Yes, the movie with Ashton. It's a common idea that we think of when thinking of a person messing up the past. You know, one little change changes everything else. The real butterfly effect, by the way, sidebar, I have to say this, is about weather modeling and changing something small and creating a massive shift, relatively speaking. Think of a pendulum that has two sections. The butterfly effect is deciding where to drop the pendulum from, and little changes in where you drop the pendulum from is going to change the output of that pendulum's movement drastically. That's the real butterfly effect, but in the movie, I get you, okay. However, sitting on a butterfly in the past after fixing you know, a toaster that you were able to go back in time and do that thing, that's a thing. And does it have vast consequences on the future? What does the science say, or the thinkers in this area say? It's difficult to really ascertain if killing a butterfly is gonna make a big change, right? The butterfly effect shows that these are massive systems. Let me put it this way. The butterfly effect in the dictionary says a butterfly flaps its wings and starts a hurricane somewhere else. But the butterfly wings are not actually that big a deal in comparison to a hurricane moving hundreds of miles an hour. So it's not actually the butterfly. And that thing should probably drop out of all of time travel discussions. According to Stephen Hawking, the complexity of the equations that it would take to predict the future is beyond our grasp. So to be able to have chaos theory understand what one little change would make in the future is beyond our comprehension. There's no way to know if killing a butterfly in the past would make big consequences. That being said, it seems like it could make a change. We just don't have any idea what it would be. Another interesting paradox, which we found, and it's similar to the grandfather paradox, there are a lot of these, by the way, is the bootstrap paradox. Think of an idea of an object being sent back in time where the origin of the object is trapped in this paradoxical loop. We like the example from the University of Massachusetts professor named David Toomey. This is where a time traveler buys a copy of Hamlet, just a regular bookstore, copy of Hamlet walks out, gets in his time machine, goes back, and hands it to Shakespeare and says, hey man, it's a great book, you should read it. And Shakespeare's like, who wrote it? He's like, mm, I did, but you can have it. Shakespeare copies it and then claims it as his own. Centuries later, the time traveler goes to the bookstore and there's Hamlet by Shakespeare, grabs it, gets back in his time machine. And I say back, but really this is for the first time. Essentially, who wrote Hamlet? in that loop. Where did it go? Where did it come from? It just exists without ever being created. That is also a flawed logic paradox. If you're still with me right now, awesome. Hi, thanks for sticking around. I've thrown a lot of paradoxes and a lot of questions, a lot of very confusing stuff at you. I'm sure your brain is just loving it. I know when we were doing this, we needed a lot of coffee and a lot of uh, heavy discussion. <laughs> but there are a few more things I wanna talk about, and that's the solutions for these paradoxes. And there are a few of them, but they're only hypotheses. The easiest solution is that time travel, at least back in time, it's impossible because of the paradoxes that would arise. Basically, time or the universe itself does not allow time travel. There's also the self-healing hypothesis. It says that altering events in the past sets off a new set of events, but the new set of events makes the events of your present day exactly the same also known as the Novikov self-consistency principle. 
Let me put that one in perspective. You go back and kill your grandpa. Turns out that you were never actually that guy's kid. Your grandpa was always killed by you, but it didn't matter because somehow throughout the set of time, you were just somebody else's kid and you were always that, but you didn't know it. You know, essentially time is consistent regardless of the changes you make because they've already been made. I kind of like that one. Then there's the multiverse hypothesis. We briefly mentioned that one earlier where there are multiple lanes, remember, or parallel groups for every event you alter in the past, a new timeline is created, and you're never returning to your original timeline, you're just going to a new timeline. But last but not least is the erased timeline hypothesis, and that says a person can change events in the past, but then their timeline is erased. They cannot go back to the future and would only go to the new timeline they created. It's not a skewed timeline, it's just this is the timeline and the old one no longer exists. Super crazy. When you think about time travel, the problem that you run into is understanding all of the nuances, which as much as I gave it a little hate earlier, brings us back to that butterfly effect, right? The idea is, and I'm gonna use weather as an example. If you and I were to stand on the shore of Japan and start waving a big fan <laughs> at the United States, we're not gonna cause a hurricane, but we are gonna affect what happens locally. That's what's gonna be a big deal. There's so many moving parts in just the weather system between Japan and the United States. Now imagine the weather system between the Japan and the United States throughout all of the history of Earth. That's where time travel gets crazy. <laughs> Because you can't just think about it as what's happening now or what did happen at that moment you went back. You have to think about everything that ever hit every other molecule in between on the way to the future. The universe is filled with chaos. And chaos theory and time travel theories and hypotheses on this stuff try and put it in perspective and to wrap our little primate brains around it. But there are so many moving parts so to go back to my not really a paradox of, you know, the DeLorean going back to the Lone Pine Mall, it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't matter that the Earth has moved, that the solar system has moved. That's kind of a pedantic argument. The point is that we're thinking about this thing and trying to put something that is so beyond our comprehension inside our comprehension. We're never going to perceive the fourth dimension, but we're trying to wrap our little brains around it, and that's the important thing. The conversation is fun, it's super interesting, and I think that almost answers why we love talking about it, right? But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments, and make sure you subscribe so you get more DNews Plus every single day. We've still got one more episode about time travel. If your brain can take it, I challenge you to check out episode four as well. And share this with your friends, because let me tell you, it has started some super interesting conversations around the DNews office. So I hope you enjoy that, and I hope you get those conversations too. And we'll see you next time. I'm Trace. Thanks for tuning in.